since the project mainly deals with uh, self-sufficiency as a core tenant, and it focuses on an internal orientation for the economy, the economy should be run to fulfill the people's needs. Uh, when that collapses uh, and Egypt becomes subjugated to the global, uh, yani reintegrated into the global uh, capitalist order, we are integrated into the global value chains uh, that kind of became the hallmark of neoliberalism, where each part of the product is manufactured somewhere else. Now, with COVID-19 and uh, the limitations it put on both production, uh, yeah, people's access to production facilities uh, and also movement of goods and services uh, across countries, uh, the fragility of global value chains became specifically exposed. Uh, and we see a lot of countries actually suffering from that issue and worrying that uh, they are not actually in control uh, of, the, uh, of production of their most uh, precious needs. And it's good, it's good to remember that Egypt, uh, Egypt at the moment imports around 60 to 70 percent of its vital food needs from abroad. So with, that, with all of this corona situation, uh, we, are, we, we cannot be in control. Right. So uh, to go back to the project itself as it relates to uh, healthcare uh, and the management of health, so uh, the provision of universal health care was a core tenant of the project. It was a very important part of uh, the social contract that was uh, written in, that, uh, in the project's context. That is the provision of uh, basic, uh, basic, need, basic needs such as healthcare, education, housing. Uh, that universal health care coverage at that point uh, played a very important role in raising the average life expectancy, improving the general health of Egyptian. Uh, it saw the last uh, epidemic outbreak uh, with cholera. Uh, it, uh, it starts significantly working on reducing the, uh, the incidence of other endemic issues to Egypt, such as Bilharsia and other issues. Uh, we, all, uh, we also saw when it came to pharmaceutical industries uh, in the paper, they are, uh, of course, grouped under chemical industries. We see the regime actually giving them special attention. We see that uh, between 1952 and 1967, the workers in these in establishing uh, in establishments uh, working in chemical production increases fourfold uh, within the span of 15 years. Uh, the gross value added increases uh, seven, by 700%, and the average workers' uh, gross value added increases by roughly 67%, which is a tremendous achievement for the time. We also see a significant uh, reduction in uh, a significant reduction in uh, reliance on uh, on importation as the domestic production ratio of total supply. Uh, increases from roughly uh, 50% in 1947 to over 60% by 1967. So, uh, yeah, that drives us to our next point, which is centralized planning from production to provision. So, uh, during the Nasserist regime, we, uh, we delve into that quite uh, a bit in the paper, uh, where we talk about what is central planning, what is centralized planning, what is developmental planning. So the centralized planning of production for medication ensured that Egypt would, uh, like in a situation like ours, it would have ensured that we would have the medication or the personal protection equipment that we desperately need in this situation. But also the centralized planning of provision that is in the form of government-run public sector uh, hospitals, which used to be the, 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 the primary form of healthcare that most Egyptians had access to. That is until uh, healthcare became uh, more and more dominated by the private sector, uh, especially during the 90s and the early 2000s. Now it's estimated that a little over 50% of Egyptian uh, uh, of hospital beds in Egypt are owned by the private sector. Uh, the prices that have been, since COVID-19 started, we saw an almost complete collapse of the Egyptian health, uh, healthcare system. 
in Egypt, uh, about a third of households rely on uh, income generated by women. Uh, and in all of these households, they are the primary breadwinners. However, most women in Egypt end up working in the informal sector where they have no formal protections, no unemployment benefits, uh, no pensions or severance packages, basically nothing. So uh, this actually exacerbates the problem as women who, are, who do not have the financial means or the material means to escape abusive relationships, to be able to provide for themselves and their kids a place to stay away from their abusers, are effectively locked in with their abusers, allowing them no, no viable way of escape. So this is an area, again, where we see that uh, although the Nasserist regime wasn't some uh, revolutionary feminist uh, project, and it did preside over what we uh, resigned to call a public patriarchy, it still guaranteed significant rights for women that have been rolled back since then. What we're seeing is when the, the, the neoliberal approach of laissez-faire, of let everyone be and do whatever they want and the state shouldn't intervene, uh, intervene means that in, in, a, in a crisis situation like this, where the state has to intervene, where the state is the only actor that is actually capable of intervening in a meaningful way that can affect change, the state cannot do that. The st it, it has been hampered by years of effectively being starved as per Ronald Reagan starving the beast, effectively has been starved, effectively has been uh, applied into incompetence, uh, and the inability to deal with societal problems, now it's asked to step and it doesn't have the resources or the capability. 